everyone, and welcome to episode 56 of Piv's NXT Point of View Podcast. My name is Bill Pivots. Uh, we're just a little over a week away from NXT TakeOver Dallas, uh, but unfortunately this week's episode uh, kind of le- left a little uh, to be desired. But I'll go over that l- a little later. If you guys want, follow me on Twitter at BPIV underscore sports. Also rate review the podcast on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube, uh, wherever else you guys listen to your podcast. So this week we had advertised Emma vs. Asuka in the main event. And we had a few other matches throughout the show as well. To kick off, there were some loud NXT chants, which is much better than what the show kicked off with last week. The show started with Elias Sampson against Johnny Gargano. Uh, my first thought is at least we got his boring act out of the way early. Uh, Gar- Gargano had some weird music. It was like some weird 70s funk kind of music. It really didn't fit his character or what kind of style he wrestles, so it was a little weird. Uh, Elias was in control early, um, and at this point the crowd was dead quiet, so he brought them down from a really, really high to a very, very low. Uh, Gargano landed a back elbow and a nice roll through heel kick. Samson caught Gargano with the knee to the face, uh, coming through the ropes. There were then some uh, drift away chants. Samson went for the high knee, but Gargano ducked it and rolled Samson up to get the win. Samson attacked Gargano after the match. He hit a uh, snap neck breaker. He shoved him back first into the steel post, and he landed his knees to the face as Gargano would get, was against the apron. Um, Apollo Crews uh, ran down a little bit later to make the save, and Samson slowly walked away. A uh, nice surprise win uh, for Gargano. Wasn't expecting it, but after what we saw in the post match attack, it made sense. Um, it was Samson's first loss, but. I didn't remember hearing the announcers brag about that he's undefeated or anything like that until he lost. So it would have been nice to play that up a little bit. Um, But even after the post-match attack, the crowd could care less. They're trying to get some heat on him. Uh, Heal heat, not go-away heat. But it doesn't seem to be working. Um, And I understand why the match was a little slow. They're building up and the post-match attack. um, And the the quick finish in the post-match attack at least kind of brought the tempo back up and I think we're going to get a Apollo Crews against Elias Samson match at TakeOver the way this played out. Uh, Not looking forward to that match. I like Apollo Crews but Samson is pretty much boring. Uh, There's really no other way for me to put it. So this match is probably going to be my bathroom break. Second match Finn Balor against uh, Rich Swan. Balor kept Swan grounded early with a front headlock and wrist lock, and he went back after uh, he went back to it a little bit later. In in between, Swan landed a uh, flying head scissors. He escaped again after the uh, hammer lock and landed a huge drop kick and a, a super kick off the ropes. The fans actually were behind Swan; they were chanting for him, cheering for him, making sure he got some near falls, uh, that kind of stuff. He landed a nice super Kenrana and a drop kick, sending Balor to the outside. He was running for the ropes, going for a dive, uh, but Balor cut him off and drop kicked him off the apron. Uh, at this point, there was a nice pace, uh, just very fast um, back and forth between the two after the slow beginning um, to start the match. He then kicked, I put that in quotes, you obviously can't see that, but I say that in quotes, uh, in the jaw. It's that kick where he's running on the apron and like soccer kicks the guy, but he completely misses it. He makes no contact, and I mean, the camera angle looks like he hit him. But you could tell that he was like maybe six inches away from his face. Uh, back in the ring, Balor hit the shotgun drop kick and coup de gras before hitting Bloody Sunday to get the win. Uh, it was a good match, obviously a nice warm up match um, for Balor heading into Takeover. Swan got some nice offense, but you knew the outcome was going to be Balor as he's the NXT champ and he's got a big uh, title sh- uh, title match, not a title shot, title match in about a week. Um, and I don't know if the fans were cheering for Swan just because he's a local uh, indie guy or are they kind of turning on Balor? Um, I don't know if it would be a one-time thing. I'm pretty sure the fans in Dallas are going to cheer for him next week. But with the rumors of the Balor Club, Bullet Club, Bulletproof, whatever you want to call it, I don't know if they're going to turn Balor heel. That would be very interesting. But I think it was just a one-time thing against the opponent this week. I'm pretty sure it was Rich Brennan or Alex Reyes. I really can't tell the two apart. I think Brennan's taller. Um, so Brennan caught up with Emma and Dana. He asked how this match was going to be different. The, the last time, compared to the last time that Emma faced Asuka, she said it would be a lot different. Dana chimed in saying she's been helping her train uh, because she's been injured uh, from her match with Asuka. Emma said that she should be in the title match. They looked a little scared. They looked a little hesitant um, leaving uh, the interview and heading into the ring as well. So it was a, uh, I'm not sure if they're scared of Asuka or just tentative, but they weren't their very cheerful, boasty selves uh, in this interview segment. 
We then got a video uh, package highlighting who Nakamura is. He met with Triple H and Vince uh, before heading down to the Performance Center and meeting up with uh, Jason Albert. So it was a nice, cool introductory package. They didn't really show much of his in- in-ring work, but just to show that the fans, uh, just to show the fans that he's uh, he's ready for our NXT Takeover. Third match: Alexa Bliss versus Sarah Dobson. And I don't know if it's me, and I don't remember, but I it's been a while since we've seen Alexa Bliss in action. Um, I like her. She's a great heel, pretty good in-ring worker as well. I think the number three, possibly four heel uh, on the women's roster. Ava and Nia Jax, 1-2. Uh, probably Ava, 1. Uh, and then you got Emma, 3, I guess. Oh, and then Alexa, 4. I think that's how that I would rank that. Um, anyway, Dobson landed a hit toss and a drop kick to start the match. Bliss sent her uh, head first into the corner and then landed some punches. She then stood on top of her, slamming her face into the uh, mat and then slapped her across the face. Alexa kicked out of a pin and then... Quickly went back on offense. Dobson caught her with a boot to the head and then probably the ugliest looking crossbody dive I've ever seen. She dove off the ropes and her knees were in Alexa Bliss's face. So the referee was checking on her. She checked herself after she got up. Uh, Blake and Murphy got involved. I think it was Murphy that distracted the ref and Blake was able to move Alexa out of the way of a move. Bliss uh, landed her double knees uh, to the gut and then she won with a sparkle splash. A uh, pretty ugly match. Um, Dobson still needs a lot of work. Alexa Bliss isn't there. Um, she's not at the level of Asuka or Bailey. Um, so it, it was a whatever match. Um, really not much to to uh, to critique here. But if a couple more wins, actually, I could see Alexa Bliss getting a title shot. Maybe not on a TakeOver special, but if unless they build her up properly. But maybe on an NXT, like she got her first title shot against uh, Bailey. I think this was Alex Reyes who went to interview Samoa Joe. Uh, he didn't get to ask his question because Joe just, I think, shoved the mic away and then just left. So we didn't get much out of Samoa Joe there. Supposed to be the fourth match was Bull Dempsey against Danny Burch. Danny Burch was already in the ring and Bull Dempsey was on his way out, but Samoa Joe attacked him from behind and locked him in the coquina clutch. He then went into the ring and then locked Burch in the uh, clutch as well. He then was yelling into the camera, uh, directing it at Finn Balor. Uh, Look at me. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take your title. Uh, just very aggressive. Joe's crazy. He's dangerous. And he's ready for TakeOver Dallas. Uh, it's official. The Revival, Dash and Dawson, will take on the American Alpha, Jason Jordan and Chad Gable, for the tag team titles. We then got a nice uh, video package for American Alpha. They highlighted their backgrounds both in uh, collegiate wrestling uh, they highlighted that Jordan lost a national championship and Gable was able to make it to the Olympics, but he didn't win. Uh, and that this is their shot of redemption. Uh, after their singles losses in amateur wrestling, they both reflected that they needed a partner to get it done. Um, so we'll see. I'm pretty sure they're going to win. They're going to pull the trigger and take the titles off to Ash and Dawson. And if you didn't see this video package, Chad Gable looked very, very cute. Very, very handsome and adorable with his uh, crew cut and little facial hair. We then got a weird vignette package thing that just kept chanting, No Way Jose. I don't know if this is a new superstar, a repackaged superstar, or what. It was just very weird. Um, Next week, they announced that Apollo Crews will face Alex Riley, and Samoa Joe will take on Bull Dempsey. Which then leads us to the main event of Emma vs. Asuka. Asuka went for the spin kick early, but Emma was uh, was able to back away. But she looked a little scared uh, as Asuka went for the kick. Asuka had Emma in a headlock and then jumped around and landed a uh, took her down with an armbar. Emma, again, a little tentative to get into the uh, mix against Asuka. She quickly landed, er, Asuka this is, landed her flying hip attack and knocked Emma off the apron, which led to the first commercial break. Back from break, Emma was in control, but Asuka quickly took back uh, control with a hammer lock. She then transitioned quickly into an ankle lock. Emma rolled her over and sent her to the outside. Emma then tripped Asuka off the uh, apron and went back on offense. She wore her down with a sleeper, sleeper hold for a few minutes, actually, maybe a minute or two. Uh, Emma constantly pulled on Asuka's hair in various ways, standing on the apron in the corner. Dana even got involved and pulled on Asuka's hair as well. Emma hit the Emma Mite sandwich. Asuka came back with a hip attack off the ropes and uh, multiple kicks to the chest. She then landed her spinning back elbow. Uh, Emma sent Asuka into the ropes, who came back with a third hip attack and right into a pin. Not sure if that pin combination was planned, but it looked good, uh, how she quickly went from the attack into the uh, pin attempt. After a uh, running kick to the head, Asuka locked in the Asuka lock to get the win. Decent match. Uh, it was pretty slow for the most part with all the submissions and rest holds, uh, so that's to be expected. 
There were some pretty cool spots, but some sloppy ones. Uh, Emma went to put Asuka in the tree of woe, but Asuka ended up having her feet over the top rope, so Emma had to slide her over uh, into the corner. So it was just a little off. I'm not sure why these two have had matches before, so I don't know why they would uh, have this incompatibility right now. So it was a little weird. Um, I don't know if they were if they forgot something or what happened, but it was just a couple spots throughout the match that it just looked like they forgot that what they were doing. Uh, obviously, Asuka getting the win makes uh, sense. She's getting the title shot next week, not Emma. And with Emma making her re-debut uh, or reappearance on Raw, I'm pretty sure we'll be seeing less and less of her in the coming weeks, which is it's upsetting to say the least. Um, overall, it was it was a below average show, I would say. The women's main event was decent. You had a Samoa Joe attack cut out the Bull Dempsey Danny Birch match. The other women's match between Bliss and Dobson was all right at best. If that Finn Balor had a glorified squash match over Rich Swan, and then Elias Sampson and Gargano was more post match filler than an actual match. So there was a lot of stuff building up, but nothing really to get excited about. So, as for next week, we have Apollo Crews against Alex Riley and Samoa Joe versus Bull Dempsey. So that'll be episode 57. But as of right now, episode 56 is to an end. I'll be back next week with episode 57. Um, I'm probably going to make two episodes, one for NXT and then one for TakeOver, which is on Friday, April 1st. I'll probably have that posted sometime Friday or Saturday night, so look out for that episode. Um, they'll be posted uh, two separate weeks. I'm not going to combine them this time. All right, so until then, peace.